sometimes because some of them are good some of them won't stay quiet for nothing some of them you got to have the parents hold them put them in the headlocks for Nelson or nine just to get a cut you know but I mean they need cuts too if you really got to do it it's part of the job I love it like I love cutting children's hair like it is nothing like having that experience with a child. I just love children, period. I love their energy and I love their spirit. And some of them give me a hard time. The majority of walking kids, I, 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 I don't got patience for that. You know what I mean? So besides, you would never notice because I'm always just that busy. You know what I'm saying? So you come in with your kids or whatever the case may be, I just flash them off to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But I do it real smooth. You start off with cutting the hair down first or cutting it whatever level you want to cut it. You kind of see how the kid's head goes around, you just cutting it, period. If he's kind of like delicate headed and shaking from this, it's gonna be a problem. Had kids throw up on me, kick me in my face, you know, had five people holding the kid, so I'm trying to shape them up. <laughs> it got ugly. All that moving around and oh. <laughs> he turns one Tuesday. It's his first haircut. There's no kid that ever comes in here enthusiastic about getting a haircut. So we have to find ways to manipulate them. We throw cartoons and throw in the Incredibles. We throw in something to entertain them to take their mind off um, the barbershop. At the end of the cut, like what always like brings me joy is when I'm able to give them a lollipop and how they react and how it's something like so small but like to them like you should see their faces light up like when I go in because I do it very dramatic like I go into my station I go into my bag and I pull it out and they're just like <laughs> one thing that street calls does do is we give out certificates with the logo looks something like this like this but it's a certificate and on the certificate it has um we take a picture, we download it on the computer real quick, print it, we um, have small bags, we put um, the hair sample on it, the name of the barber who cut the hair, the date, the time, the name of the child getting the hair cut, and everything, everything's included. I think, you know, getting your first haircut is very sentimental, especially to the parent because, you know, it's a child and you, your child is doing something for the first time, and you're a part of that, that, um, that that history. It's my first haircut last week. Uh, <laughs> Alexis. So how how how, how was the experience taking? It, it was it was good. We went to the barber shop. There were some Russian guys on Court Street. They put him on like some cushions, and they weren't that friendly. But I think it looks all right. Twelve dollars plus tip. That's like. Most regular haircuts. <laughs> so, Cobble Hill, I don't know. That was the prices. We got some new guys like this over here. You know, he's been coming to me for a while now. You know, ever since he was, he was yay small, he getting older now. So he's used to the clippers and everything. He doesn't fidget, he doesn't move too much. He's a man. Actually, the first time I came in here, my father told me that he was better than a lot of kids. Not too my own home, but you know how kids get when they sit down. It's so good. You come in, it's comfortable. Yeah. You know, regular barbershop, the same thing I do when I go to the house. Is there a feeling of like pride or something? Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. I remember when I when I was going to get my haircut, my, my father was deceased. So he passed away before he really got a chance to take me to the haircut. So I do take pride in bringing him there, getting his haircut. You know what I'm saying? You can see him. Get a clean cut. He looked like more like me every time he get all that hair over his head. <laughs> Yo. Ready for these? Nice cut. Good. 
Boutique? Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. so get the girls now. See what he going for, right? He going for the money, boy. He quit for the guap. He said, yo, he's like, Dad, let me hold that stack. Don't worry, your time going to come, though, man. How about that beat right there? Big boy. All right? All right? That's my dude. Your son's first haircut? His first haircut? How old was you? Five. No, when you got your first haircut, when we cut your braids up. Four. No. Three. Yeah, like three. Yeah, when he was three years old. Shit was like down in here, we cut his braids out. Saved like two braids. And he been spinning ever since. You want something to store, buddy? What do you want? Huh? Oh, you know what? I didn't want to see you go over there, how it's happening. I don't like that. Oh, that's my daughter came back. Candy? Hell no. I'm just a little bit now. You got a son, right? Yeah, no doubt. What was his experience going to the ball for the first time? Oh, my friend, he tried to grab the clippers and cut it himself. <laughs> yeah, dead serious. The little man's a trooper. Yeah, I'm pulling, I'm pulling. You're looking I'm out there. And I talked to my mother. Tell you, son. Come on. Try to get a chance to take that down and get out of it, remember? You're not taking that. You know how much you get to stay? Yeah, I'm not taking that. Yeah. Don't touch it. Come here. We have people come here, they help tutor the kids after school. A lot of times the kids want to come here and they want to play pool, they want to play video games, but that's not happening until they get their homework done. You know, I got kids myself, so I mean, when I, you know, I see kids come in and so sort of reckless and handy, you know, I always spit a good word. I mean, I, mean, I got to, it's just like, you know, I see, I see kids falling off every, all, every day, you know what I'm saying? So I got to say something to them like, you know, how you doing in school, you know, you got to be concerned. So you got some waves in your hair, what you do to get that? Brushing. Brushing? Every day? You get your hair cut every week? Every week. Wow. Why you get your hair cut every week? So I can get the legs. <laughs> wow, how old are you? 12. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what time My name is Dwayne. Hi, right, people. All right. But I'm speaking so that you know And understand I got the gift of speech And it's a blessing So listen to the lesson I preach I talk sense condensed To the form of a poem Full of knowledge from my toes To the top of my dome I'm kinda young But my tongue speaks maturity I'm not a child I don't need nothing for security I get paid when my record is played To put it short I got it what? I got it made Yeah, I still got it made Ain't nothing changed Cause they still gotta pay I say where there's a mill There's a way all right, one of the first barbershops I ever went to was Tony's, Nostra Nav, in Erasmus Street. If you ain't never went to Tony's, you wasn't in the hood getting your hair cut. From Tony's, my man Rico, that lived across the street, his pops opened up a barbershop on New York Avenue in church for Eva and Richards. You know what I'm saying? I used to go by there here and there, but I definitely supported my man. They lived across the street. After that, I started cutting hair. Check it out, y'all. Listen closely. Yeah, so your attention's undivided. Many in the past have tried to do what I did. Just the way I came off it, I'm gonna come off stronger and longer, even with the trouble. 
when the whole S curl thing kind of started fading out, dude started doing designs and it got real exotic with the symmetrical cuts and designs in the hair. Inside your fade, that's when it got crazy. And um, every barber, the barber that was the nicest with the design, those are dudes that got all the money. My man Manny used to cut my hair in Flatbush, big up to my nigga Manny, crazy with the designs. And all the barbers out there in the 80s and 90s, that was the era. And next up, I believe that's me. Light up the mic for the symphony. Hey, yo, this year is dedicated to all unoptimistic. Thought I wasn't coming out with some exquisite rhymes. But that's all right, cause now I'm back to kill all the rumors and treat the facts of me. Not rocking rhymes like I always used to, but you jumped on the snip when you heard me in the shoes crew. You said, oh, 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 ain't that something? The fuck you heard you in that jam and this puppet? I had the flat top, man. I ain't gonna front. In the symphony video, I had a bad flat top, man. You know, a lot of styles were different then. You had the Gumby, you had the flat top, you had the uh, the slope. Remember the slope joint? You know, um, the fade was rocking. There was a lot of good things going on with the hairstyles now. But, you know, um, things change. You know, the, the younger kids, they just went to Stray Caesar. You know, um, and when you look back on it, they do look kind of funny now. <laughs> When I used to get flat tops and shit right now, you know what I mean, I got the Nazis. But I used to go, like when I was in high school, me and my PNC Tech, Smokey Live, Smith & Wesson, we used to go to um, Queens, because um, Onyx, uh, Sticky Fingers, and, and, and um, the boy Fredro used to work at the shop over there by Girls Mall. So they used to like, they used to hook dudes up with the, with the, with the, uh, give you the Timberland sign in the head and all that. So I'm like, yeah, we gonna go get the Timberland signs, you know what I mean? And I went, I, I went overboard. I went and got a polo, a polo man in the back of my head. And um, I think Sticky did it or Fredro did it, but they fucked my shit up. My first haircut was um. A cheap one. My mom bought. I think my mom just hit me with the razor. Okay. I mean with the uh, the clippers, but you know, mm -hmm. I remember my first going to the experience going to the barber shop because I used to work there and sweep up for some cash. To the ladies, they know a party goes. Some call me P, I'm a slow flower. Brothers on my job for the way I hold a piece of steel. BK. Hey. The first ones we was okay. We rocked the Caesar joint. I had the moon. Then he had like the little, not like the high tap, but he had a little up there. But then when we got to the fisherman hat, then I think mines went up just a tad bit. And then my business as usual lost a little focus, so I had to go back to the Caesar. Special Ed haircut was the fade with the curls on the top. Before that, I had plaits. I had braids in my hair back when it was like only two of us in Flatbush with braids in our hair. Things went down, I had to cut it. So I cut it, and the fade was the first haircut that I got at that time when I was a teenager and it, and it meant something to have a good haircut. But all the girls liked it, so I liked it. That's the biggest part of hip hop. Like before you go do a show, before you get on a plane, you gotta go get a fresh one. I know I got thousands of dudes that went out and got the special ed haircut. From back in the day, the kid and play, redhead kingpin, you had um, the polka dots Kwame. Then you had the Big Daddy Kane haircut. When you saw like a Big Daddy Kane, you went and got that haircut. Forty ounces. Forty ounces of OE. Ready? Yo, what's up? This your boy, School Blubber, aka Big School, aka. Johnny Famous. I'm gonna take y'all through my hood, and that's what it is. I used to live right over here, Saratoga, between Park and Sterling. They tore my buildings down. It was like a 15-story a building, and they took it down floor by floor. Like, it wasn't like no explosion or, I never even seen it. Like, when I came back, it was like to the seventh floor. I'm like, I, I didn't even know how they did it. But um, it's gone. This should be like Gun Hill Road, it's where M.O.P., Biggie used to hustle over here. Um, smooth the trigger up the block. My man E, Bond, they own this building that you're standing behind. This block right here, we used to play Skelly. <laughs> we used to play Skelly hard. So, I wish that was a sport. Explain what Skelly is, because a lot of people don't know. 
Skelly is a game in a box. You got 13 boxes, and you go from one to two to three. And it's, you know, so I don't know if it's just New York, but um, we used to play right in the street. It just kept us doing stuff as kids. We was no PS2 right. and all I that. To, I had my first fight around here when I was maybe like 12 or 13 with um, my boy Lazy Lays and Biz, they call him. You had to fight. That was my introduction. And I had asthma when I was little. So I'm fighting one dude, and then a Lays came with the belt, and I'm fighting. No matter of fact, I took my belt off because it was two of them, and his moms came and broke it up. And they both got beatings, and after that, Lays was like my like best friend to this day. So that was my intro to this block. I'm the only child, so and get a shot. It's my man E. We going we going um take it to his barber shop, mini mini styles. You want to tell him about about this corner right here? You tell him about the Saratoga Hackers. You heard? Yeah, One, two, three, buck ass wow. You heard? Everything he just told you is true. You know what I mean? Bottle fights, forty fights. Yeah. Building against building. Building the robberies on you picking. Heard? Get your motherfucking pockets you dug know, out. You know. Like you know, all that, man. All that's a lot of. Cats is living a little now, and I'm not with the violence, but I meant you had to walk from here to the A train was mad fucking long. See the fucking calf muscles right here from walking? So it was crazy, man. You get robbed anyway. Yeah. And, but you know what? The best dudes got robbed because, I mean, you wore your shit, and you can just be a crab nigga on the fucking train. These dudes now don't know nothing about it. They don't know nothing. They just get on the train with the earrings, whatever. You couldn't even wear a polo shirt. Matter of fact, you couldn't even wear fucking Pumas and Adidas. Niggas be like this, worry what size you wear, homie. You already know. You know what I mean? Ask the barbershop talk now or what? Yo, right here, we about to go in mini styles. Y'all can ask whatever questions y'all want about how many ball spots I gave cats and now I'm playing. Come on in. I started on the old warts, the one that's just the boot joint. I ain't even have no tremors. Yo, I mean, I, I mean, back, man. That's the, in the early 80s, man. The kids tell you they want to do their head. That's the chronic. That's the chronic. That's the chronic. Like, they had to laugh. Yeah. This nigga is the original barber. Yeah, Scoob Lover had the cape with the chair in his room. My mind coming back to me yeah, now. Make his little mistakes on you. Yeah, yeah. And I learned from one. I ain't even have the tremors. Tea. So to imagine how hot them shits was <laughs> after that doing a blind little scab, but I learned the designs every day. of uh, people who made music in Brooklyn, uh, specifically hip-hop artists, uh, people that I always loved, and uh, photos that I took mostly from the mid-80s to the mid-90s. Uh, there's a couple here or there, one way or the other, but uh, just the artists that I loved and I uh, feel have a strong uh, representation of Brooklyn and uh, some of the ideals and you know attitudes. Yeah. Where was this? That right there, I think that was like before, right before like a show or even... Yeah, it was like before a, sh before a show in like a little side room. So there's a total behind the scenes shot of Big Daddy Kane and Scooby. He was doing the uh, Smooth Operator, I'm So Smooth video uh, at the John Allen's Men's Club. And uh, this is, you know, like I said before, he uh, just kind of uh, felt like his hair was letting him down after about a half an hour getting ready. So he went back in to get another shape up. So his brother, Bradley Razor, just kind of touched him up. And I didn't, I didn't cut Kane in grandmother house. Every hotel, and anywhere, Clippers, you just got a plug. Yeah, school, hook me up, hook me up. I think I shot maybe three or four frames. You know, it wasn't, wasn't like I looked at it and said, it's gonna be the biggest uh, thing. But as time's gone on, I mean, it is a pretty cool shot. I, I kind of like it a lot. I mean, Kane certainly is a great artist. Uh, you know, Scoob looks really cool. Look at how high that hair is in there, right? You know? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's like land lease right there, you know, boom. <laughs> what, what made you come up with the three cuts in the eyebrow? Just hair was, you know, was somewhere like visual, like hair. So I was like, yo, let me just um put a line here and look hot. See the other ones right here in the head, in the front of the head, too. I ain't think nothing of it. It's just a design. Like, yo, it's a part here. Let me just put some line. It's already a part, you know what I mean? If I'll go like that and close it off, it's just a part of a design. He ain't never really said he just let me do whatever. Oh, so it was just whatever you came up with. Yeah, he never. But 
as I did them, he would kind of like say, yo, I like that. Yo, hook me up with that one. Again, like we were talking before with some of the photos, you kind of see an interaction between the two guys. Uh, I mean, Kane, Kane was a, a pretty tough guy when he wanted to be, but he's also a pretty cool dude. So, you know, I, I think part of, uh, part of his allure was trying to, trying to look sharp. And uh, I guess that's what helped him get into that sex book with Madonna. Like, even when I had that little part on the side, I wanted to do something a little different. I said, where can I put it at? And I just was like, you know what? Let me make it come down. I made it a part of my, um, my point. You know what I mean? So that my point right there, I said, let me, let me work with that. There's only so much stuff you can do with a head. But then you like, I kept that for a little minute, though. And two little joints coming down. I mean, because everybody had a flat top, so it's just like everybody driving a goddamn Cadillac. You, you got to do something different to it, you know? You don't got to, but I was that type of dude. I think part of it, uh, personally, I, I kind of thought it was a reaction to uh, the, the backlash to the gold chains, because, you know, it became dangerous to wear gold chains. People getting beat up and killed and whatever, I mean, you know. Uh, so people started going to the leather, you know, leather tags and stuff like that, and uh, you saw them more and more hairstyles going going crazy off the you know off the chain and, and stuff so another way to <laughs> another, yeah and you know no one was gonna i mean sometimes you'd hear people talk about uh you know how much spray they put in the hair and stuff like that or it was plastic or something like that but other than that you know it was pretty much uh, open territory that people would just respect kind of giving you space and uh, at least that's what i saw you know i uh, saw a lot of people uh obviously you know i'm the last guy who should be giving uh, hair advice this also shows something else about the those days of the video and the, and the hip-hop industry and that his brother would have to go give him the shape up because they didn't have someone around to take care of the hair. So, you know, he just kind of ran into the back and he's like, yeah, just got that razor with you? Yeah, sure, boom. So, he, you know, and he knew how he wanted his hair done. He knew how to do it. He trusted his brother to do it right. And uh, I think you can see it on the photo. It's pretty cool. Was you like, was you the official barber? Was like, yeah. everybody came to you? Yes. The official barber. If I pull them clippers out and line one person up or anything, we on the road, everybody. It was cool if I needed some money, but I wasn't stressing no money. But you missing out. You want to go to the venue, go do certain things. Everybody, yo, you could just, you could cut me. So, yeah, I was an official, official, official barber. I ain't mind because, I mean, everything they did throughout the day, it was like, that's my haircut on that dude. I don't look at it as nothing big. So, y'all, I'm like, like hey, I do, I could come, you know what I mean? That's like... And then, I mean, when you start seeing everybody doing it, once you do it in the video, it's like, wow. But then, I'm, we moving so fast, I'm not going, I'm not thinking like Back then, it was just fun, and you know, you could walk around with big ass 40 ounces of fucking beer. All we was doing was snapping, drinking beer, cutting hair, and uh, chasing chicks. <laughs> Lover, man, had some good times with my man. Game party, Tyson yeah. L, all them. Y'all remember <laughs> we was jamming. We doing a do si do of some hardcore. You know what it is. Yeah, yeah, Keep yeah, it going, yeah, baby. Yeah. Wherever he at, yeah. we at. Yeah. Look around, see the faces, cause we had with Paul. <laughs>
Papa, you wanna see this? And my name is Hustle Man, aka Coke Smoke, aka Paper Chaser. Come on, DVD, man, come on, man, knock on me. You know, my head is chilling, you know what I mean? Having a good time, do what I do. I, I say you a jacket off my back! Man, I go to all the barber shops from here, from Notion Ave all the way down to Broadway, man. I'm, I'm worldwide out here, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, check it out, man. Kids DVDs, man. Kids, kids macaroon and all that. Let you slide and all that, man. You can't beat that, man. Oh, wait, 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 it's the hustle man of the year. Right here. Yeah, Let's talk about the hustle man. <laughs> hustle man right here. You ain't got it? Yeah. You need it? He got he it. He got it. <laughs> right there. Yo, big. Give a shout out right now. Yeah, man. Big up all Caribbean crew. Yardy, Yankee, Trini, everybody. Massive, everybody. So what so what can I get from you? Anything you need, from pin to plane. You just say it, I got it. Godfather, baby. Original. Costa Nostra. Got Superman original. But you don't know where we got it from. Bang. Original. Wanna dance? We can dance. Why the barbershops? Why the barbershops? Because barbershops are the funniest place to be. You know what I mean, that's where all the laughter at. That's where you can go get your hair cut and you could, you know, crack jokes. You hear the mother jokes. You can hear what's going on in the projects with all the hood girls and all that. That's why I be in barber shops, you know what I mean? You want your nice flies off when you go in there too? Yeah, I do that, I do all that, man. I sell DVDs, CDs, you know what I mean? I sell kids' clothes, women clothes, uh, man, clothes. Hey, what's your life? Hey, what do you feel like? This is me. Coach. Five in the store. I, I really just want to see what you had there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, okay. finally over the weekend, maybe like a Saturday or something, you come through here. I'll take some over, I need some shirts sometime. Like around June? Yeah. We'll get some more of the short sleeve jackets. Yeah. Right, yeah, like All in right. June when it gets really hot. Right, right. right now it's still kind of kind, kind of low here, low here, low here. Yeah. 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 All right, fellas. Definitely, bro. All right, All right. take it easy, man. God bless. God bless, brother. See? That's how you get rid of the, the, the hustle mans. You, know, <laughs> you say, yo, listen, partner, damn. I don't need one right now, but uh, maybe Saturday, Sundays, man, I have a little more money. You know, my pockets is full right now. I got to bought five or six of them shits right now. But I'm like, nah, 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 maybe Saturday I can buy two, three of them from me. And when it comes Saturday, you act like you mad busy. I'm cutting, man, hey, yo, oh, shit, Paul, yo, I, I'm dog, I got this nigga, this nigga, that nigga. Yo, come back next week. Till they get tired of coming after a while, they know you ain't buying shit from them. And you fed up, you know, you don't know fucking more, right? That's how you gotta do them sometimes, man. Keep, 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 keep the hustle confident sometimes, man. Or maybe by the next third time, you might bring something you really want. Well, I pause. <laughs> the DVDs. I was having like little issues, like purchasing. The watches, jewels. I found myself not being able to participate. I don't try to jewel a person down to nothing. I give them what they want. Unless it is, I must admit, a deal that I can't pass up. Help them out, you know? That's what I do, I'm a hustle man, you know? I'm getting it for free anyway, so I give it up for free. Yeah, how do you get your merchandise? I get my merchandise, man. You ask too much questions right <laughs> now, but um. The barbershop is, is very much so a marketplace. You know, you can get just about any and everything in the shop. The store comes to us, man. Christmas is coming. I ain't gotta go out Christmas shopping. I'm a shop right here in the shop. All my Christmas presents are gonna come right through the door. It's, it's a hand-in-hand -hand relationship between the barbershop and the hustlers. You know what I'm saying? They come here, they see us. You're saying the hustle men, all day the supplies for things. We don't get time to shop. We don't have time that's for day off. We true, don't have course. time. Oh, they keeping up with the times. They selling Bluetooth headsets and camera phones now, man. Guy just left. You ain't see him? He just left, had Bluetooth headsets. Oh, that was a hustle man right there? A700. <laughs> hustle man will bring you a studio microphone and then bring you some laces, some gold-plated laces. Like, they, where you get gold-plated laces from? I don't want that, Hustle Man, thank you. But let me get that studio mic, though. You got people that come through sun and tank top socks. You know what I'm saying? You get your bootleg kicks that everybody think is real. Yo, we got a dollar store, Hustle Man. We oh, sell deodorant, <laughs> everything, mayonnaise, yo, Jamaica's everything, yo. Don't see me for Catch that door from the Now, every barbershop, though, got a hustle man. I got a hustle man. Every hustle man, bro. You need a hustle man in a barbershop, though, you know what I'm saying? It just so happened that this barbershop got about 50 hustle, hustle men. Yeah. You got, all right, you, you got hustle man, and you got the crackhead that just be, you know what I'm saying? Describe that. 
Crackhead, you gotta watch him. Yo, this nigga came in here with one tire one day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking tire. Like, yo, call me. You know, it's just like a tire. Like, man. You ain't got the rest of the car? Like a lot of times you don't know what the fuck he thinking. He could've got that shit from next door and you gonna have next door people shit and they gonna be looking at you all crazy. Straight donut, a big one. You know what I'm saying? Like he stole it from a Benz or something. You know what I'm saying? He almost got it sold too. Okay, I know a guy who wanna sell a dead puppy. Yeah, they, uh, Robert Sosa, man, he living. A dead puppy. They, 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 they happened back in the 70s. They had a guy, Kind of sell a guy a TV in a box. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah bare rocks, a box, yeah. box full of rocks. When the guy got home, he had a box full of rocks. Yeah. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You try to sell a dead puppy? Yeah. The puppy was dead. He saw puppy he was, was dead. He, 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 he bring it. He bring it right there, and tell the guy, look, buy this puppy from me, man. I just get this puppy. He's just sleeping. He got it. He's selling a dead puppy. <laughs> that puppy dead. What's the most bugged out thing a hustle man try to sell? Pussy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? You try to come here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Try to come here and sell some strippers yeah. one day. We got strippers, we got them. They try to sell us all. There ain't no lie. Hustle man can be trying to sell you everything. It was a hustle man. It was a hustle man. They try to sell you everything over here, man. Dude tried to sell his mama one day. <laughs> there ain't nobody it was buying her. It was not buying you know her. <laughs> nah, but I mean, you know, dudes try to sell everything. Yeah, Pornos. it's good though. It's a good thing. Pornos, though, CDs. Stuff, stuff. We got females come in here to sell their lingerie. We got females it's real, it's come real, in, man. The strippers come in here to check the ballers because they know we got the money and there's gonna be a real strong male, male base right here. Yeah. So they come in yeah. here, they flaunt, they self strut, they strut, walk in, try advertise, try see who they can snag to get out, get out there. In these spots, you know, they know it's a good spot to, to, to holler at, at, at the dudes, you know. It's all business, day. that's it's all it business, is. you know. It's all business at the end of the day, it's all business. I'm taking a cut, I'm sorry, man. It's a hustle. You know what I'm saying? Movies? Movies? I got five movies right now in my hands, right? I'm ready to give you a package deal. I'm out. Super Mega. I'm out, my dude. I'm a rap to you. Money, 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 money. Money. Yes, I need money. Son, definitely get his money. Son's a hustler, man. Definitely be getting this I'm giving you a package deal right now for all these four movies. Give me thirty to twenty-five dollars, and you got all these movies right here. Veinticinco. Nah, 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 nah. What are they wait? Twenty-five. Take and leave it. Of all movies. Peace. Peace, y'all. One love, y'all. Stay up. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. That was... $25 for the last four movies, man. As a matter of fact, give me $20 for four movies. 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Take it, leave it, take it, leave it. 20 bucks. I'm going to do my last round. 20 bucks. All these. Ah, yo, I'm out for real now. And we respect them, we love them, we need them. You know what I'm saying? It gives, it gives us something to talk about. As soon as they walk out, we talk about it. Hustle Man drinks a lot. Hustle Man smoke a lot of weed. We put that sazon, that flavor, into the barbershop. When I go, 
and make you laugh first before you buy my stuff. So you could buy my stuff. You know, if you ain't got a hustle man coming through your shop, you ain't got a good shot. Hustle man had just left the door. That's my man right there. <laughs> Yo, what bet he got? God bless y'all, man. It's hard to find barbers that are reliable. You leave out the shop, you know, I'll be like, come back and say, how much did y'all make today? So it was a problem. Oh man, we ain't even somewhere today, man. I said, what? I said, this is Canil. We gotta make some money over here. Get rid of him. Get rid of this one. One guy sitting there, I come in the shop. The shop is always crowded, mm -hmm. but nobody's getting cuts. I said, why nobody get cuts? What are you doing? Selling weed. <laughs> <laughs> In my shop. I said, what the hell? I said, wow, that's crazy. This ain't, this ain't gonna work, man. Make sure I got no cola in my eyes or that wild shit. My name is Jay, Jason, you know what I'm saying? But everybody call me Boogie. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, you know what I'm saying? Born and raised here. You know what I mean? This been my neighborhood, my stomping grounds since I've been a baby. This is my hood right here. You know what I'm saying? This is establishment one, where everything started from. We got another location on Church and Rogers. My name is Frankie. Right now you're in my barbershop. The name of the barbershop is called Street Coles Barbershop and we're located in Brooklyn, New York in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn, which is the south side. This is Who's Next Barbershop. We are right here located on 1896 Fulton Street between Buffalo and Route. You wanna see me? You wanna see him? We see my other man, Doug. I met this guy on a total different field, and the next day I'm here, he's trying to get into what I did. He called the specialist and said he needed a hand, <laughs> you know, and to keep, you know, get this big thing because we're looking forward to having a conglomerate, conglom conglomerate, get it, get it, all right? Get it. Uh, uh, we'll new, get you on that later. <laughs> you know, we try, we try. We're trying, oh, we're, trying, we're trying to upgrade the vocabulary in the neighborhood too, as you see, and I'm a student. What happened was I did some time. I was incarcerated for a while. How long, how long were you incarcerated? I was 13 years. 13 years you were? 13 Damn. years. <laughs> I like to dress nice. I like to have nice things. And a regular eight to five making the minimum wage is not going to accommodate my lifestyle. Somebody plugged me into a, a foreman. I got into a good outfit, a company, and they accepted me. I was doing um, rebar work, which is concrete reinforcement for major industrial companies and was busting my ass. I was coming home with over uh, $1,000, $1,100 a week. I mean, how sweet is that? I got tired of being in the snow, in the scorching sun, and just busting my ass for somebody. I was saying to myself, you know what? I could take the same time and energy, and I'm not getting any younger. I'm getting older. I need to do something for myself. And I saved my money. Went to some family members, went to my mother, got some money for my family, told them, showed them my idea. At the beginning, I was very scared. Yeah? Yeah, but then I said, you know what? From what he was telling me, you know, then the rent, that scared me. But then I said, you know, let's go for it. Find your spot, do what you have to do, and we just want you home. We need you here, and this is something the community needs. Maybe like a year and a half ago, we met Frank, and, um, we just, we clicked, we had a talk. He gave us a ride to the club, as a matter of fact. And, um, and the second time, the second time we, um, we met up again, and he was talking about he wanted to open up a barber shop. As I was growing up, I hung out in the same park. And right on the sidewalk, all my friends used to, we used to all hang out right here. When I was incarcerated, I always had dreams mm -hmm. of me flying and flying to this terrace. Mm -hmm. And I always, like, I always feel like all my plans and all my visions always start from the same very point. When I used to play in the basketball tournaments in the park, I would sit here before the games and figure out how, how, what, what, how was I gonna deal with this particular team. Stood on this very spot with a glass of champagne in my hand, my family in the living room, um, my mother, my son, um, my girlfriend, my family, my immediate family, and I came out in the terrace, looked right at the place, and I said I was gonna have that. I wanted that exact same location, 
And I said, that's gonna be my barbershop. He came up with the vision, which was perfect. And he let us, he let us choose this spot, which is good. A lot of people just, you know, they um, just take the spot they gonna take and, and they don't even care about the barber's input, you know? You see the shop, how it's lit up. And you can basically see that the fluorescent lights, you can see it from a great distance. And that was like one of the main significant things about even the sign. The awning is a little bit different style. A lot of people, you know, they go with the basic signs. That right there is actually um, a silk screen, which is like a, a new idea that just came out. And I just jumped on that and it just stands out. I've been cutting all my life. Mm -hmm. I opened my first store on Cotillion and Coney Island when I was like 21. And then we've been doing it ever since. When I was working in the shop and when I was a kid, there was a barber shop that's right there around the corner from right here. And that was like the pop in the shop in the hood. And it was at a prime location. So all the time I'd be like, damn, you know what I'm saying? It'd be nice for me to get a shop over here. And then out of the blue, my real estate dude just called me. He's like, yo, Jay, I got a spot on Beverly and Flatbush. Location is really the most thing because like if you're in a bad location, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to generate a good clientele. It's like your work got to speak for itself, which takes time for a business to establish because it goes through word of mouth. You don't get just like the regular traffic walking past. This was a record shop. When I got this store right here, this store looked nothing like what it was, totally different. I had to just like gut the whole store and then build everything from scratch. The million of records in there, I was, had nightmares about records for days and days and days. Clear out places, man. And then one thing when you open your own business is a lot of things that you don't know, like garbage. Garbage is expensive. You don't know that until you have to start paying to get garbage out of there. You gotta have a concept, the idea, how you want your business to be, how you want your shop to look like. It took me 30 days, 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day, just putting this together. About, yo, he, like, I say like a month. One month, we got it, we got it popping. Like, it ain't look nothing like this. It was all fucked up. Right now we have the pool area, so while you're waiting for a haircut and you have nothing to do, you can always come back here and play some pool. We have two lounge chairs, two couches. We provide internet service for all you know, the people that want to come, they want to check the email. To this section, we have video games. So if you don't feel like playing pool, you don't feel like lounging, you don't feel like getting on the computers, play some video games. Plasma TVs, sports equipment. The reason why we have sports equipment is because right across the street is a park, believe it or not we will beat Modell's prices. We have mixed CDs. Nothing here you'll find is ever bootleg. This is a barbershop, but we're not gonna sell nothing bootleg. Everything here is official, everything. Sounds a little crazy, but we have some computer stuff. Just so happens somebody might wanna come in and they might need some ink or they might need some, um, some internet cards or something for their computer. We have accessories. For the gentlemen that the ladies do find pleasure in, we sell um, passion kits. A passion kit is, is like a mile high kit, which comes with condoms. It comes with like a small vibrator, blindfold. A lot of times you find guys that get haircuts and they find that they, their shirt gets hair on it and they wanna go, they might be going to a club or they might be going somewhere and they want a clean shirt. We sell clean t-shirts. We try to encourage people to, you know, to buy the magazines, you know, we know that knowledge is power. And over here we have um, little Kung Fu movies. I don't know if anybody was growing up on Kung Fu movies, but we still got them. A lot of times we used to have to wait for Channel 5 on Fox at 3 o'clock to watch a Kung Fu movie. Believe it or not, a lot of people ask for them and they love them. Urban Street DVD, the Latin section, because you know we try, to, we try to accommodate everybody. Over here we have the new releases. We have some of the old documentaries, Living Color, Chappelle Show. And to the back, if you notice, we have um, video games. We have Xbox. PlayStation, we sell cell phones, cell phone accessories. You can get um, your boost cards here. You can get um, the chips. So if you want to change your number, if you feel like a girl's blowing up your phone, you want to change your chip, this is where you come. We also have um, t-shirts with logos on it. That's running the um, shirts. We have colognes. And if you look on the top, we have um, a little sneakers, a li little sneaker section. What I have on a fitted hat, which came from my own store. Down here we have um, another section of the sneaker collection, which all the latest sneakers we try to keep up. And one thing I must say is that though we charge, we charge for everything, we're not trying to rob our own neighborhood. We know that people have to make a living and they want to buy things. We're not going to charge the prices Best Buy and all these other places charge. 
Over here we have jeans, socks, sweatsuits, all the latest fashion. We have rock -aware. We're a big supporter of rock -aware only because Jay-Z is from this neighborhood as well. So we try to support his line. We have beverages. A lot of times people come to the barbershop, they find themselves getting thirsty. This is my little office, my back area. This is the counter. We have barber supplies in the back. A lot of times the barbers, we're gonna get to the barbers. I know everybody's wondering, where's the barbershop? Ringtones. You can get all the updated ringtones. We have a catalog for the ringtones. We have a massage chair. Like I mentioned before, the name of the barbershop is called Street Codes. And the code of the week, what we try to do is we put different codes every week where we try to educate and we try to teach people certain things that's going on with the street. Right now we're entering the barbershop. I know you've been wondering where the barbershop is at. This is the barbershop. This is where the clippers are. This is where all the, all the hair, this is where it's gonna get a little bit messy. So let's, let's get ready to get dirty. One of the biggest problems is a lot of times people sit in that chair, they don't have no money. And they tell me they're going, they're gonna go find the ATM. They don't gotta go nowhere. The ATM is right here. They get their money and go right to the barber. They don't have to leave the barber shop for nothing. This right here is my, my master barber. He's the guy with the license. Without him, this barber shop couldn't exist. This is Rich the barber. Right now he's kind of client. Red is a veteran to the game. He was with us from day one, and he's gonna be with us for a long time. Right here, unfortunately, we have another barber. E, he's not here at the moment. He has some surgery. Hopefully, we need him to come back next week. Um, I wanted to show you something if anybody wanted to know what the barbers look like. That's all the barbers right there. Worked at Sing Sing, Shawangung, almost everywhere. It, it's really not as glamorous or as, oh, I got a blue collar, I got a badge. It's, it's not that serious, you know what I mean? You come here, he told me, hey, I'm going to open up a barbershop. You do. So let's go. Whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll run. It's my role, it's my brother. Whatever you want to do, I'll roll with him. He found somebody else, my man Doug. I'm so happy. April 1st was opening day. We and... fooled nobody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> April 1st was the official day we opened up. And believe it or not, we got heavy, heavy business that first official day. From that day one, it been it been a lot of love in here. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot, a lot of people respect it because uh, besides, like I said, this cutting here, we changed the look of it, the, how things look. We make people comfortable when they come here. Even on Sundays, we come in here, you know, with hard bottoms. Fresh shoes, mm. slacks, white shirt collar, and you know, nice haircut. Like old barber shops, everybody was clean cut in the shop. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it was like it was like a thing where you couldn't even come in without being clean. You had to have a fresh shave. Everything had to be official. And you know, I wanted to kind of bring back a little bit of that whole clean cut. Everybody looking official because you know everybody not doing it. Me and him, you know, saying the combo of us, you know, what I'm saying being good looking dudes. Throwing on barber jackets, you know what I'm saying? You know, greeting people nicely. We ain't nothing but your local dudes coming close to you. I needed somebody on my side like that when I first got in here, at least to give me that strength to really, you know what I'm saying, do this. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say I was nice when I first came here like that, but they used to just, just come to us, you know what I'm saying? He had that whole vibe, and it was like me and him, the combo. We was out there running out, throwing flies, doing things, running through the whole hood. I don't even live in this hood right here. But I, I, you know what I'm saying? With that man and by my side, we? And we? we ain't best stop, baby, you know what I'm saying? Bree Boy for the street. That ain't my projects, man, but you know I say when I came out with this dude, I had no fear to run whatever. We had this one episode one day. We be sitting here in the shop, right? And this guy walks in. He's like, yo, man, yo, yo, man, y'all can hook this up, man. Yo, my face is all taut, man. So we looking at him from the door, like, what's wrong with your face? You know what I'm saying? Looked at him, like, what's wrong? Hold his face, looked at him. He like, nah, my sideburns was hooking all around here to my chin. Everything was laced. This dude with the block, yo, yo, he messed my joints up, man. So we like. I'm like, word, you know what I'm saying, doing my manager thing. So I was like, word. I thought he messed you up. He was rowdy. I said, like, word. The guy out. Huh? Yeah, I said, like, like, word. So I grabbed his face and said, yo, tell him, hook him up. <laughs> you know, so tell him, takes the dude, right? So he, he lays the thing, he laces him up, hooks him up. He like, yeah, he's sitting in the chair, like, yeah, because yo, the other barber, y'all punched him in his face, man. He messed my haircut up. <laughs> That's how serious it is, man. You want to get punched in your face or you want to do quality? So he's like, yeah, he's like, yo, man, you hook me up because y'all punched him in his face, yo. You know what? Yo, I'm about to go punch every barber in their face in the shop. So I'm like, what? What did he say after that? Yo, what did he say? He was like, yo, you need some chairs or anything? I got you. He, got, he was like, mirrors, yo, matter of fact, he made a phone call while he was sitting in the chair. He was like, yo, come boys, through. Boys. This dude just like, messed me up. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, yo, I punched him in his face. Come down, about to get him. Two seconds later, before I even cut the clippers on, four, uh, you see four or five dudes come yep. up. They see how we get down. We not getting all riled up. Word, you knocked him out. Oh, snap, <laughs> me. How you want it? Ain't that bad, I got you. 
Just behind what? the bar. Next thing you know, my man Doug cutting up his man, other man going over there. Relax. The CO thing, the law firm thing, the, the own company imaging ink thing, it doesn't compare to the feeling that you get when you're cutting hair. Cutting hair is an art. A painter would not work at a, a stopping shop on C-Town or Kifu. He wouldn't do it. It's an art. He will stay there and fine tune his art until he, he's satisfied with it. As a matter of fact, he'll probably do it until he's dead. Well, you know, it's uh, we had a loss here and there. Mother guy that worked here with me, you know, saying he was on the tape, man, Tony. You know what I'm saying? We, we lost him due to some legal legal issues, you know, he was dealing with. And, um, you know, it hurt us, you know, what's up with the man that was in here? And, you know, I got, you know, some, some people I tell and some people I don't, you know what I'm saying? Some stuff like that, you know, just personal between barbers, between, you know, people, period. So, you know, um, but like I said, it hurt us a little bit. You know, of course, that was our, our family here, that was our team. Mondays and Tuesdays in a barber shop usually be like, huh, uh, uh, you know, iffy, iffy, one cut, two cut, three cuts, you know, here and there. This dude would make that shit pop. You know what I'm saying? This dude would go outside, tell motherfucker in his face, yo, money, yo, damn. Fuck, cut you, son, damn. That line a little even, um, yo, come inside, let me, let me hook you up for $5. He wrote a strong or, or saying, aura like that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody felt they had to hustle more. Cause this is what he was doing, he was hustling hard. I've been cutting here since I was 12. This is shot, shot dirty. And I don't get chump change for cutting here. I get paid well. Lieutenant and I, dog, it ain't me. I get busy. So I knew this is the team, you know, we had shot here, you know. We had to bring shot dirty in here. He ain't here right now, you know what I mean, but when that's the same. Nah, we, we, we've seen plenty you, of him. You've seen a little bit of shot. I think, I think you know the guy a little bit. Yeah. They call me the doctors. Did anybody that know I cut their hair when they go to other people and they know they get messed up, who they got to come to? I know Shaq gonna make me look right now. Holla at your boy. I got strong back up, you know what I'm saying? Foundations like my man Trini right here. I've um, been doing this for about 15 years. Started off in the house in the lobby. I don't know, from the looks of my work, I might think I might. You know what I'm saying? A little something, something. Where you from? You from Brooklyn? Nah, originally from Trinidad, you know? Out in the bush. Born in Trinidad. I moved to Brooklyn when I was 13. How long you been doing this? Shoot, man. Uh, I'd say like a good 15 years. Me and my boys in junior high school cutting each other. And then, like one day, I went to a, a, a shop and I asked the dude, who, the, the owner, I asked him to show me how to paint because I can do a little something, but I wasn't a man or nothing like that. Nah, uh, call me passion, you know what I'm saying? AKA Mr. Sakwasa Entertainment. AKA International Peak. I'm all over the place. Turn around, you might just see me there. Okay, Sakwasa Entertainment. You know, basically do a lot of parties in and out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, I basically, I'm basically, uh, I'm Jay's, uh, Jay's promotion. One of the best ways to socialize with people. Best ways to get to know people. Call somebody's psychiatrist in no time. Somebody's counselor. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in retail, Macy's, a couple of different places, but I always uh, cut hair. When I was in college, paid for my books, and I kept doing it because I found it again, I'm not a living that I need, the vacation time I want, because in America, they give you the worst benefits around, and Barbara and lets you get away from everything, you know? It's about time you came over here, man, because this is where the, the CD gets you real good at. The rest of the bum ass things don't pay no mind to them, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple names, all right? My name is Bush Baby, a.k.a. Young Handsome, a.k.a. The Bad Guy, all right? So point your finger at me. Boom. Still on 15, you dig? I'm 21 now, you know what I'm saying? I'm the youngest dude in this shop. I'm Trinidad originally, you know what I'm saying? But in New York, from Southside, Jamaica, Queens, moved to Brooklyn, been here three years so far, and I got it on the block. We got top of the line barbers, and we get money out here, you know what I'm saying? So any barber that want competition, man, come see this, man. Anytime y'all ready, man. And this not even all of it. This is just some of the things with the camera, yo. This is not even, you know what I'm saying? What I'm really capable of. This is just a camera. You know what I'm saying? 
You do this any day. Any boy that I see cutting like this, I'm suing you. Any boy that I see cutting like this, I'm gonna sue you. Trust me. Look, any boy that I see doing what I do, I'm gonna sue you. It's not a one man show, it's a team effort. Everybody put everything together in the pot, and then we make a nice, you know what I mean, little pot of soup out of that. Look at my magic workers. Look at my magic workers. They work magic, baby. My name is E. You know, everybody call me Eco, you know, from the area. Been living here, you know, 33 years. You know, I've been cutting since I was about 13, you know, doing it for a while, off and on because of my you know, little disability here, rheumatoid arthritis. It really started bothering me when I was about 14, 15. You know, like just getting into high school, back and forth to the hospital, you know, test, test, test. But I don't let it stop me, because this is my love. I love to cut hair. I was a newspaper boy. I worked in like a fish factory. I love like warehouse jobs, you know. A lot of people don't like them, but you know, I like, I like lifting stuff. And, you know, using my hands. Since I started 13, I was already in a barbershop. So, you know, I didn't want to mess nobody's hair up. I was kind of, you know, so I wouldn't really tell nobody. But, you know, once I got good at it and I picked it up, then I started doing like designs and stuff like that. And um, I've been, I was in the game when they were doing the flat tops and all that. I've been cutting for about two years with my license and then a year without my license. So all together, about three years. I'm free here. I just, I'm, my, I'm my own boss. Like, I can do whatever I want. As long as I just pay my chair for my rent, I got everything pretty much set up. It's freelance work. You work when you want, you know. Um, there's no boss on top of you telling you what time you got to come in, when can you go eat lunch, what time you got to leave. And you're just basically hanging out with the fellas in good, you know, good environment where everybody you're working with. So. Happens to be a fun job, you know? Only when you're making money, though. I got the invitation to work here, and I came and checked out the shop. I looked at it, and I was like, ain't no point in leaving. This is one of the hottest shops in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Everybody come through. I got all types of people, all types of fields of work come out. I got lawyers, I got doctors, you know what I'm saying, police officers. The customers speak for the barbershop itself. The customers, they are persuaded very easily. They come once, you ain't here or you ain't consistent, you ain't gonna last in a business. First you have clientele, which is your customers that are already established, that's been coming to you to get haircuts for years, or maybe months. Then you got walk-ins. Your walk-ins is the people who's walking by, see a crowded barbershop, look like, wow, they could cut hair in there. They come in there and say, you know what? I'm gonna trust the barber and let them get a haircut. Walk-ins is important because a lot of people just don't walk into any barbershop and say, you know what, I'm gonna let you cut my hair because some people get their wigs pushed back, they get their lines all dismantled, they're not gonna find that here. And the barbers here, they've been cutting hair so long that they have established clientele and they're very reliable. Even though I am the owner, I don't cut hair. I didn't establish that. I'm not a barber. I do own the location and I just, you know, overlook the barbers, overlook the merchandise, just making sure the customers are happy because there is other things that have to be done here. So, you know, I'm happy for the team I got now. I got a good team of responsible dudes. You know, even though they slip, you know, they, they slack up every so often. And sometimes I come in here and it's crowded. I'll be like, why is it that? He be by himself. And I, be and I tell him, I'll be like, yo, Joe, I said, hold your boy up or something, man. I'll be in here, yeah. two, two, three other people yeah. sitting there, one yeah. in the chair. And it's for real. And hey, what are you coming with? Yo, son, yo, it's kind of rough. Because you ain't here. And I start getting yeah. flashbacks and shit. He don't know I'm getting flashbacks. Oh, I'll be like, man. Damn. I know what you're going through. Yeah. <laughs> all, all, all the way forward. But I want to watch you out there. Yeah. <laughs> How you feel coming up on this year, man? So I feel wild, man. I feel like it went like it was like yesterday, man. Somebody even said that to me the other day. It was like, yo, it's like, yo, man. I, I, they asked me like, how long you been in the shop, and I'm like, damn, since April. And I'm like, damn, think about it now, like, April was here, right? you know what I'm saying? Like this April right now, we was just here a year ago, man. We had drama in here and all that. Like we didn't have air conditioning in here. We was just roughing it. 
Had to cut one light off, keep one light on, and yo, yo man, it's just like, it's a blessing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, having a, having a beginning of the shot like this, and then seeing what's evolving to right now, it's just like a blessing, man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like, I don't, it ain't no feeling like that, man. It's const it's a constant reminder when a customer com customer comes in, and we see the response. It brings us back to reality that this is a major achievement. So that's how I feel. I feel like I really did something in my life. And you know, you see where the barbershop is at, and I guarantee you in five more years, I'll have a couple more businesses on that block.